while we were in Hokkaido, I finally got enough points to uh, be uh, released from the Navy. And I uh, went on a troop, troop ship from the Navy, I mean from Hokkaido, or Tokyo, I don't remember which one. Uh, back to the States and we landed in San Francisco and, and I re remember a couple of things that I did in San Francisco. Uh, I had a girlfriend at that time who at least was my girlfriend before I left and she was going to the University of Georgia so I went into this fancy store, women's store, and bought her a lot of black lingerie. <laughs> And she got the package in, in the dormitory at the University of Georgia and she didn't know what she was going to find and got all her friends around and found this black lingerie. But anyway, uh, my family had, by this time had moved to Nashville, Tennessee and, and uh, I was released from the Navy and my brother, younger brother, had, was in the Navy was in the Navy in Memphis, Tennessee. So I had picked up a couple of Japanese guns that were laying on the ground somewhere and I brought those home with me. And my family hadn't seen me for three and a half years, so, but we decided to hitchhike home. It was the longest way. And we each other was carrying these guns and nobody would stop and pick us up. But, Finally, we got the uh, guns and all. But after I got out, uh, I pretty much went right into the investment banking business here in Atlanta. And I've spent almost 50 years in that industry, uh, about half the time in Atlanta and about half the time in New York and Wall Street. And it was good to me, and, uh, and I loved it and met a lot of people that are still and friends with, although most of my friends that are my age, which is 80, are not around anymore. We had uh, three or four good friends. I had three or four good friends that was killed in action uh, that I went to Marist with, and my uncle was killed. And, uh, and, uh, but it was a great experience. Uh, it didn't seem so at the time, but it's, it's wonderful to talk about it and look back on it. I thought one thing that's so sort of amusing is while I was in the Pacific, just to try to pass the time away on these long convoys and, and so forth, uh, I had one friend on the ship that took the New York Herald Tribune every day. I mean, it come maybe three dozen at a time, but, but uh, he was trying to handicap the horse race, the thoroughbred <laughs> races in Belmont Park and so forth, and he had this new system. He tried to teach it to me, and it, it, it was pretty good, but I, I didn't have the guts to go in with him after the war, but uh, uh, I lost track of him, I hope he did well. But another thing I did was sort of amusing is while I was sitting out in the middle of the Pacific, I was thinking about getting home and, uh, and uh, I made a list out of the things that I would need when I got home and I tried to figure out how much it would cost. And I think it's sort of interesting. I'm going to have my daughter, Laura Emlyn, read it right now because uh, uh, I'm virtually blind. So Laura's going to read it and she's going to read it. And you, and you can see where my mind was and, uh, and, uh, and what they cost. And you can figure out for yourself the difference in the cost then and today, you know, my, my, my estimate of the cost. So, Laura, read that. That's okay. Clothes and items to be purchased when discharged from Navy. Approximate prices in immediate needs before securing job. Two months rest, $400. One car, $1,200. One shotgun, $50. One camera, 30 
one squash racket, 10, one tennis racket, 15, two suits, $100, one raincoat, 40, one sport coat, 35, three slacks, 45, three sweaters, 45, 12 shirts, 30, 12 shorts, 12, two shoes, 20, 10 ties, 25, 10 wool socks, 20, six silk socks, six, one robe, 15, six pajamas, 25, one tuxedo, $50, two tuxedo shirts, six, one tuxedo slippers, five, one set of cufflinks, $15, four sport shirts, 20, one pair of moccasins, four, four athletic shorts, $6, Six athletic shirts, nine dollars. One tennis shoes, four. One belt, three. One garters, two fifty, and two suspenders for five dollars. Grand total, two thousand two hundred and fifty-two dollars and fifty cents. And I think I uh, that's exactly what I did when I got home. I said I was. Uh, my father bought everything at Brooks Brothers, and he yeah. taught me to so. That's why I went the first time I got home, but, uh, but that's pretty much in the capsule of uh, three and a half years in the May then. And I came back to Atlanta, and as I say, went in the investment banking business and went to New York for twice for a total of about 20 years. And, and uh, have lived in Atlanta with my four children. Uh, also here for the last week, 82, or about 22 or 3 years, and been retired now for about 12 or 13 years. And, and although my health is not as good as I would like, it's, it's been a great gig. Well, you brought some pictures, a scrapbook, and I'd like to have Laura turn to the pages. We're going to make copies of some of these, but uh, you've got some pictures of you and your shipmates, and I want to get those on the tape. Well, let's, that's a good page right there with the picture. Should I just hold it up? Yeah, just hold it up, and I'm going to hone in on there, and that's your picture, and in fact, all of those are your pictures, I believe, that, and I'm just going to focus in here so we can get these on the tape. And then if you'll turn to that next page that has, yeah, that one. I'm, I'm just going to take a second here. and While we're doing this, let me ask you something, uh, Mr. Black. While you were on your ship and you were watching these battles in the Leyte Gulf and Okinawa and other places, did you feel fear? Were you scared? feeling was. It was a feeling of exhilaration and I guess uh, feel was part of it and I mean, you can't help but be fearful if, if you're sitting on the beach in an exposed position and people are machine gunning you from the, uh, from the beach and planes are flying over trying to strafe you. But but I, I, I really don't remember. I, I, I guess that I, I guess that I was scared, but it didn't seem like it at the time. I, I probably wasn't scared. I don't know. I, I guess I sort of always liked to live on the edge, and I, it was sort of exciting. One other question: Did you realize while you were over there that you were participating in probably one of the greatest? Historical events ever? One of the most significant historical events Certainly ever? Certainly not as well as I do now because I'm sort of a history buff man. I read everything I can get on the various wars and, um, and history. Uh, and, but my education uh, had not been such as Atlanta public schools and high school and college that made me really want to. Uh, I guess I, I didn't think learning was exciting then. 
I thought, you know, just to get through the night to the Zion and have fun on the weekend with all my friends and so forth. Although I did read a fair amount then, but since then, uh, I've read so much about nearly all wars, and particularly World War II uh, and the Civil War, that I, uh, I see what, uh, looking back, I see what an unforgettable event it was that I was participating in. Uh, uh, but at the time, I didn't think of it like that. I was still 21 years old, and, and my mind just didn't connect with, with history and this war. I guess I was pretty much a playboy and until I got, got back home, I really started reading a lot. Like I read three newspapers a day all my life. And, uh, and, and, I, and, and I'm aware now that I was in a big event, but I, I, I don't think I was then. I know I was. Well, we're coming to a close now. Is there anything else you would like to say before we um, come to an end of the interview? No. Uh, since I've been out of the Navy and been back in civilian life, I've got four wonderful children who are all about uh, in the early 50s, the late 40s, all the way up here in Atlanta. And it's uh, such a blessing to be able to be back. I mean, to be back, or well, not back with them, but to be with them. And, and uh, we've had also wars since then, most of which I have, I have not approved of personally, and uh, particularly the Iraq war now, and, but that's another story, but I sort of consider myself a, a uh, sort of a history buff, because that's pretty much all I've done all my life is read. And, well, I've done other things too, but reading has been a great hobby. And I have hardly ever read non I mean, I hardly ever read fiction. I've read non fiction for years and years. And, and it's given me time to think about all these things. And, uh, well, I just want to thank you personally, but also on behalf of the History Center for everything you've done for the country. Uh, your, your service in World War II was invaluable. and everything you've done since. So it's an honor to, to be part of this interview and to meet you and just thank you so much for participating. Thank you for asking.